Are you struggling to figure out what makes a good multifamily investment? Well, today I'm going to walk you through the way I analyze apartment buildings and show you some things that you want to watch out for. So be sure to watch till the end. Hey everyone, I'm Cody Charnell, investor and multifamily real estate broker with Sage Real Estate here in Long Beach. And today we're gonna to go through the analysis of an 11 unit building that recently closed escrow here in Long Beach. The goal of this is to give you an idea of how we look at the numbers um, and to give you a, a sense of what it's like to analyze an apartment building. So let's get into it. All right, so here's the listing for the property. Um, you can see it was listed for 4.25 million it actually ended up closing escrow for 3.9 million. So the buyer is able to negotiate a little bit of a discount on this one. It's 11 units and we can see at the top here, 66, 46 square feet of living space on a 7,275 square foot lot. Um, this is located down in the peninsula, uh, as you can see on the map here. And that size lot is actually huge for the peninsula. Uh, if we look at this one on the tax records, it actually is three separate parcels that this property is built on. So really rare and interesting building, um, definitely in a location. And uh, something else that the listing will show us is if we scroll down, uh, we see the unit mix and rents. So it's an 11 unit building. All 11 units are one bed, one bath. And something that I like to do is, um, we know the square footage, 66, 46. So if we divide that by 11, 66, 46 divided by 11, that gives us a rough idea of how big these units are. So on average, we're looking at probably about 604 square feet per unit. Um, so that gives us you know, just a sense of what these might be like. Um, and if we look at the rents, we can see that rents are extremely low. Uh, the lowest looks like 1100 and the highest looks like 1950. This is one of the nicest neighborhoods in Long Beach. So we know those rents have a lot of room to go up. The listing agent on this one uh, is saying 2,500 a unit is market rent. Uh, I think if you did a really nice deluxe remodel, you could even get more than that. But let's just use that to um, do our analysis. When, when some investors are looking at this building, they see those low rents and they start to get heartburn. They're like, oh my gosh, these rents are so low. How am I going to make this deal pencil out? Uh, but some, some investors actually look for this type of deal specifically because they know if they're able to raise rents, not only do they increase their cash flow, but they can also significantly increase the value of the property. Because as we know, apartment buildings are valued based on the rents that they generate. So if you can get it to a point where it's generating significantly more rent, your value is going to be significantly higher. So um, going back to the listing here, we can also see 11 separate electric meters, 11 separate gas meters, um, Scrolling down to the photos, um, this, this property has seven garages, which in this neighborhood, parking is very impacted. You can rent those for additional income, or you could look at converting them into ADUs. Um, so there's, there's a ton of potential with this one. So one of the first things that I like to do when I'm analyzing properties like this is run the gross rent multiplier. That's kind of the first filter. So I'll run gross rent multiplier based on current and on potential rents. So we pull up the calculator here. Uh, it sold for 3.9 million and current rent is 183,000 roughly. So it sold at 21 times gross based on the current income. And market rent, we said it was 2,500 a unit. There's 11 units. So it's gonna, it could potentially generate $330,000 a year in gross rents. So if we do 3.9 divided by 33, 330 grand, that means we can get this building to operate at 11.8 times gross, which um, those gross rent multiplier numbers don't really mean anything unless you know what properties in that neighborhood are trading for based on gross rent multiplier. And I can tell you 11.8 is crazy low. So um, something else we can do is we can find the market average for this neighborhood and come up with our projected exit value. So let's say we know that in this neighborhood a fully stabilized building which is already getting market rents trades at like 15 and a half times gross that means we can take our market rent of 330 grand and multiply it by 15.5 and that gives us a stabilized value for this property of 
$5.1 million. So we're buying it for 3.9. We're gonna renovate all 11 units, get them up to market price, and the building's gonna be worth about 5.1. These are just rough numbers, but um, this is something I would do to filter this deal kind of on the front end before plugging it into my pro forma, which is what we're gonna look at next. But preliminarily, it looks really good. Okay, so now we're, now we're looking at um, an Excel sheet. This is our pro forma that we use to analyze deals. Um, and so what you can see on the inputs tab here, this is where you plug in all the property information. So on the left, you have things like purchase price, square footage, number of units, um, some other little costs. Uh, next to that is the financing section. So because this building is more than five units, you're going to use commercial financing. Um, and the way commercial financing works is banks look less at the borrower and they look more at the property like it's a business. And they want to see that the business is able to support the loan payments. So they, they like you to hit something called a debt coverage ratio, and they want that debt coverage ratio to be at about 1.2. Okay, so let's see how much down this property would take to make it hit that 1.2 debt coverage ratio. So if we did, let's say 75% down, we're just slightly over. So let's say 73% down, not quite enough, 74, okay. So it looks like we need about 74% down in order to get conventional financing on this property. With 74% down, we're hitting that 1.2 debt coverage ratio. Um, and so we know that the bank will, will lend to us. So that's a ton of money down. Um, most buyers aren't gonna wanna do that. Um, another option would be to do a bridge loan where you're paying a higher interest, like 11% interest and they don't care about the debt coverage ratio. So that's another scenario that we could look at. Um, we're not gonna go through, the, through all these different scenarios. Actually, in this case, the buyer ended up paying cash for the property. So we'll just, we'll just run the pro forma as if they paid cash. Um, so now if we go to our summary tab, we can see what the numbers look like. So purchase price of 3.9 million. This property is priced at 22 times gross based on current rents. We have our market gross rent multiplier of 11.5. Um, and if we scroll down here, we can see a few different sections on the summary tab. So we see our, our current rents, our market rents. Uh, we see expenses. So this, this sheet takes into consideration taxes, insurance, repairs and maintenance, property management, utilities, really everything that you'd want um, if you were looking to buy this building. And on the left-hand side here, it spits out our, our cash flow. So if you're paying cash for this property, cash flow is gonna be low until you can get those rents up. And then at the very bottom, um, this also shows us our upside in this deal. So um, it's showing us our exit value once we get rents up, um, how much we gain from appreciation. So we're getting a 31% return from appreciation here. Uh, significant cash flow, and we also have tax benefits. So this shows four returns combined. You're making over 37% on this deal um, once you capture that upside. So this is just a, a quick example of how we would look at this property. So if this is your first time seeing something like this, I know it can be a little overwhelming, uh, but this is the type of analysis I do for my clients to ensure that they're getting the best deals that they can. And this is the stuff that I'm also teaching my clients. So if you're interested in learning about this, we would love to work with you. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, also, be sure to check out my channel where I do this type of analysis all the time. Uh, and again, I'm Cody Charnell. Uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.